Hi guys, it started raining on us during our uh, big uh, project outside the uh, garden beds. So we're inside, we're going to cut up some apples, go and dehydrate them, and also, <laughs> and also we're going to make a pie with uh, these apples right here. So we got some, what was it, Fuji apples? Yeah, we got some Fuji. And then we got some, what are these? Golden Supreme, or Golden Delicious, essentially. Yeah. So, why it's gonna be cutting them, I'm gonna be making, with well, not this, <laughs> I'm gonna be using my granny's recipe for apple pie. So. And maybe a few added elements because we think it needs something more than that. It's a very simple recipe with just apples, sugar, cinnamon, flour, butter. I'm gonna add a little bit more and see how it turns out. <laughs> Life's all about experimenting. So I need five apples. So yours says cut these into smaller triangles, right? Y yeah, so you essentially like cut that into thirds. So I'm doing a cup of sugar. I'm actually gonna do less than a cup of white sugar. The recipe calls for a cup of white sugar. I'm actually going to add a little bit less than three, or a little bit more than three quarter cups. And I'm going to add some brown sugar. So we've still got an equal measurement of sugar, but we're adding in some brown sugar for that. Because I don't know, brown sugar and apples just go together, don't they? I always thought so. <laughs> The recipe calls for a sprinkle of cinnamon, but I'm going to add not that much. This is what my dad taught me. When you're seasoning something, you want a nice layer of the seasoning on top, and that's usually a good rule of how much seasoning to add. <laughs> so you want, like, depending on how much you want it, if you want it like you really want to taste that seasoning, you want it completely coated, and then you mix it in. If you don't want it that much, you just do it like speckled. So, cinnamon, when you're working with apples, lemon juice is great. If you've got a little spritz bottle, add a little bit of lemon juice and some water, and you spritz it on your apples, and it'll prevent them from browning. And a lot of times you can't even taste the lemon. And if you do, it's like such like a slight citrus that it just blends in with the taste of the apples. It's fairly nice. Can I get in here? Yes. A little tiny whisk. So I can buy the sugars and everything. I should make a video on using a whole pumpkin to make a pie. But I don't think a lot of people know how to do that. Yeah, that's that's something that uh, my mom taught me. My mom taught me too. My mom always said you go for the white pumpkins. My the pie pumpkins. mom just went for any pumpkin. <laughs> really. I think any and, pumpkin works. It just depends on like the kind of flavor. You know? And instead of like actually carving out jack-o'-lanterns, this is later on when we didn't really care about carving out jack-o'-lanterns. Jack mm -hmm. We would just like draw faces on them so that my mom could cut them up cut them in half oh, and you like, yeah. <laughs> bake them down and stuff without having it go bad real fast. So I have to carry the flower. So I have to put it on my shoulder. <laughs> it's so heavy. I need to get like a smaller jar. Okay. Let's see. You can ask me to go get it. Oh yeah, you're busy. I'm never too busy to help you. Whenever you're done with that, you can just throw it right in this. Still got two more apples to do. Well. I'm always nervous to like share like cooking recipes, you know? Especially when it doesn't turn out for us. We, we don't have any cooking degrees other than 
what we've been told. Like I was always told just to cut them into like eighths, not these triangle things. Well, I, I'm assuming you're not doing a top crust with this. This this recipe makes a top and a bottom crust. All right. Do you like a top crust on apple pie? I thought, like you have to have a top crust on apple pie. I think you have to. You don't. You don't necessarily. You don't have to do anything. Ooh, this one's a juicy one. I'll tell you what. I will never go back to living on city water again. Why is that? Well, water's just better. Like tap water and city water taste like chemicals, and you don't realize it because I never tasted anything else. You, you never had anything fresh. And like, we tested our water when we first moved in, and then just recently tested it again. Yeah, just to make sure that we weren't uh, drinking anything that was hazardous. Heavy metals, microbes, that sort of thing. Literally, it, it checked as like 100% oh, water like both Brita, times. Like Brita filter, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> like so clean. I'm chopping up the rest of these apples over here at the very least to go and get dried out. We forgot to do the lemon trick over here. Well, they're not browning that bad. I mean, I mean, it, it's pretty bad if you compare a fresh cut apple versus what they are. So here, I'll show you. This is what you want it to look like. You're using three parts flour to one part Crisco and you combine it till it looks like crumbs and when you squish it together it keeps its shape. Don't do it too much though because you're not trying to make bread. You don't want to develop any gluten. You want it to be nice and flaky and crumbly and this is what's going to give you that crumble. Then you're going to add one part really really cold water. So when I say three parts to one part to one part that means I'm gonna have a, one and a half cups of flour, a half a cup of Crisco, and a half a cup of this. But if I were to do three, like three full cups of flour, then I would do a cup of Crisco and a cup of water. So instead of giving you the measurements, I give you the like parts to it so that you can adjust it for yourself. The one and a half cups flour to half a cup of Crisco and half a cup of ice water makes two pie crust or a bottom and a top or one really thick crust. You take the water and you slowly add it. So add like a little bit and mix it together. So you don't want your dough too wet. Then you won't be able to roll it out. But now that this has some lemon on it, I'm actually going to put, the, put this in the fridge until we're ready to use it. Um, which just means if we're working with cold so this is going to go into the fridge. Well, it would, but I'm probably going to pop it right into the oven. Uh, no, I should put it in the fridge. But when you're working with colder ingredients, you may just have to keep an eye on it. So it is going to have to heat up to room temperature before it starts cooking kind of thing. Um, I've got this nice, beautiful dough. It's just, it's slightly sticky, but that's because the Crisco is at room temperature. So. It doesn't look like much, that'll make two pies. Two nine inch pies. I'm gonna wrap this in plastic wrap and put it in the fridge for 45 minutes to an hour minimum. You can leave it in overnight if you're making pies the next day. Really good to prepare your pie dough in advance. Because with your cooled pie dough, your Crisco is gonna harden. And then as it bakes, it's gonna melt and incorporate and give you that kind of buttery, delicious texture, which what she's telling me is we're going to actually have pies tomorrow, not tonight. No, we're going to have pies tonight. Right. Into the fridge. What's going on? Huh? <laughs> what are we doing? Not letting you on the counters right now. So all of these trays, there's one, two, three, four, five trays filled up with apples. <sighs> all right, and it's off. Off to the races. Yep. 
Yeah, it's getting pulled in through here and blown out here with all these and out the bottom. It kind of smells like a hair dryer a little bit. It's probably just because it's new. It's probably because it's new. But yeah, so it is 5.45. So the soonest it'll be done is 9.45. So we'll come back at 9.45 for an update. Yep. All right. And the star of the show. It's Apple. It's Apple Snapple. Look at that little tail go. Go down with the girl. Okay, so it's been a little bit over an hour. It's now 6.30, but being in the fridge longer isn't gonna hurt anything. So my dough is nice and chilled. My apples are nice and chilled. You see, they didn't turn very brown. So brown you do see is the um, brown sugar cinnamon nutmeg, that sort of thing. So I'm gonna unwrap this. You'll see it looks a little white. That's just the Crisco that's like re-solidified. Throw that. Wow. I'm gonna... It's the lightest dusting. Definitely be a lot easier this way. So I'm going to take a little bit of flour and just kind of smooth that on there. And instead of rolling it this time, I'm going to kind of fold it. Fold it and then push it to the side, bring this over, and then kind of lay it like that and then lay it over. And then kind of stretch it into place. So I'm going to take this and just kind of I'm feeling for really thin spots too, but yeah. And then I poke it so that any air underneath or within is going to get released, and I'm not going to end up with a pie crust that looks like this. So I'm going to throw this in the oven for about five, maybe ten minutes. I want it to get a nice, like, little bit of a crust just on top. It doesn't need to cook all the way through. So when we put the apples on top, but they're going to release a lot of juice when they cook and you don't want that just seeping into your bottom crust and making a soggy crust so like i said the pie crust did shrink so i'm having having to add a little bit up at the top but now to add our apples hey dad apple we're adding you in get in apple she's like i hope so that would taste delicious <laughs> Like you don't have to add in that, but add like a little bit of extra cinnamon and sugar because I already see it filling up right here. Yeah. But yeah, there's that. Oh, you threw one. Oh, throw it in there. Or you eat it. <laughs> so the thing I need to do is I need to lay these out and pinch it on one side first so that I'm able to like pick them up. And what? What does it matter? because you have to lift up these after that because you're throwing that down and lifting it up. So you want me to start? No. no. What are you talking Let about? Let me show you. So you lift them all the way back here. Oh, and then... And Pull then it all you, the way back oh, here. Oh, I see, I see. And then you put them back here. Gotcha, okay, all right. So... Do you want to do it? <laughs> I'm just surprised I know something that you don't. No, I mean, I, it doesn't really make sense in my head kind of thing, you know? But then just kind of layer that right on top of that one. Layer that. So that the counter's going to be a mess, but there's nothing a little cleaner cleaner won't fix. So no, you lay those all the way down now. All the way down. All the way down. And then you lift up the opposite side. All the, and then... To that point. The opposite side. Okay, I can't see. All right, all, right. all the way, all the way, and all the way. And then you lay another one, just like. Yeah, I'll show you back a little bit further, so I can add more. All right, about there, and then pull it back all the way.
look good. Looks I think good. it looks really good. <laughs> I'm really proud of myself. Well, I'm proud of us because I would never have gotten a lattice. I would have spent eons on it if it hadn't <laughs> been for you. But I want to make sure it's nice and secured on there. That'll hold the lattice. And that is a beautiful apple pie. But you got it? Well, maybe. Ooh, I'm about to spill it everywhere. Oh, don't spill it. Okay. And We're going to eat a little bit while the pie's in there, so. What I am going to do is I'm going to get a little cookie sheet, thin little cookie sheet, and I'm going to slide it underneath. Just in the terrible probable chance that it will start to boil and over <laughs> so yeah hopefully i'm trying to limit the mess that it's gonna make but yep all right now 40 minutes on the clock and <laughs> well, the sugar's not done yet well never mind turn it off the sugar is not done yet Can you get me the trash real quick? <laughs> the, I think the it's definitely appley and looks delicious. It, it may the, not have kept its pie 